welcome to our summer episode of Book Buzz. My name is Giovanna Iannace, and this is my colleague, Annalisa Regano, and we are going to discuss a few summer picks for you. My first pick, which is called The Dry, and it's a novel by Jane Harper, and it's considered a page-turning mystery that takes place in Australia. The author lives in Australia, and this is her debut novel. So it's actually a double mystery in, within the same book, and we don't really know the circumstances of a, a drowning of a teenage girl. It happened 20 years earlier. And then we have a current uh, killing of uh, a man, Luke Hadler, who is best friends with the main character, and he is uh, accused of killing his family and also uh, killing himself. Yeah. So it's a, it's a bit, it's gruesome. They don't get into too much detail, but once you get through the, that premise, it, then you can focus on the, the crux of the mystery. And the main character is a 36-year-old federal policeman named Ann Falk, and he's returning to his hometown, which is uh, about five to six hours from Melbourne, and he is there to pay his respects, and only plans to stay there for about, I don't know, half a day and then to get out circumstances come up and he befriends a detective on the case and he ends up staying and while he's there he begins to have flashbacks to the murder or I shouldn't say the murder we really don't know um, what the circumstances are for that particular death with this young teenager that he was friends with when he was also a teenager so there are a lot of nice little twists in the story you think you know what's going to happen and then oh, it's, it's with it, yeah, and you read this, and you, oh, you didn't finish this one, right? This right. One, you should finish it, because I think if you like mysteries, mm -hmm. this is a, a perfect mystery for you. The protagonist, Aaron Falk, is a likable fellow. Uh, he's stoic, he's professional, he's thoughtful, and you, you really take a liking to him as a character, as opposed to most of the other characters, which are pretty much um, unpleasant uh, personalities. But it has good twists in it. The title, the dry, refers to what about this covered the whole area. But it also refers to the title to the emotional state of the characters as well. And um, there's hope for rain by the end of the story. And this is one of three mysteries that will feature this detective, Aaron Paul. And that's the beginning. It's first the first one. one. It came out last year, and Force of Nature is the second one in the series that features the same detective. So my turn, um, I have a book to recommend called The Death of Mrs. Westway by Ruth Ware. Ruth Ware writes suspense novels. This is her latest, and maybe you've read a few of her others. She wrote In a Dark, Dark Wood, um, The Lion Game, and The Woman in Cabin 10. So this was published in May, and it is a page turner, and it's a great summer summer read. I want to say that this book, like her others, has a very gothic feel. So when we're talking about gothic, we mean, we think about settings that are very dark, very gloomy, very foreboding. The setting usually takes place in a, an old mansion or a castle or something like that. And usually a woman who's in distress. And there's always a sense of melodrama in the story. So this is exactly what I just said is exactly what takes place in The Death of Mrs. Westway. So as for the plot, we have a young woman. Her name is Harriet Westway. Um, she's called Hal in the story. And Hal is kind of like alone in the world. She has no family. She lives in a very rundown uh, flat in the seaside village of Brighton in England. And she works as a tarot card reader. And doing that, she barely ekes out a living. And what happens is she gets herself into a financial pickle because she goes and borrows money from a local loan shark, which is a huge mistake. Yes, and of course the loan 
HR comes to get his money, and she doesn't have all the interest that's due. So his visits become increasingly menacing and foreboding. So one day, um, Hal gets a letter in the mail telling her that she's going to be given an inheritance by a recently deceased grandmother. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the thing is, Hal knows that her grandmothers have passed away many years ago. So she knows that the person that's named in this letter, Harriet Westaway, is not her. Mm -hmm. It's a, um, it must be a, a case of mistaken identity. She is not the long lost granddaughter that is mentioned in this story. But because she's in such financial problems, she says, I'm going to go along with it. I'm going to go and get that money she, so she's committing fraud. Mm -hmm. So she goes and follows the instructions in the letter, goes to this big old house where most of the story is set of the recently deceased grandmother, and she meets this Westaway family, this other Westaway family. And she's there with them for about a week. And during that time, um, her life slowly becomes entwined with theirs. And then she starts uncovering deep, dark secrets mm -hmm. there. Yes. Um, so this is a chilling tale with lots of twists and turns. And I want to say that my I have two favorite parts of the book. The first is the tarot card reading readings. Because Hal is a tarot card reader, you get to find out all this stuff about tarot cards and their meanings and the symbolism behind it. It's really interesting. The second part that I really like is that the writing is so descriptive and vivid that you can really like envision everything that's going on so clearly. So that is my first choice and it's a fun summer book to breeze through. But it's like a mystery, right? Like a suspense. It's a suspenseful story with a mystery attached. But it's not like a ha ha ha. It's like a it's intriguing. Like, it's like remember that show Dark Shadows, that yes. old soap opera? Yeah. It's like that. Okay. So it is a little ominous. There oh yeah. Little, oh, there's ominous. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Well, my um, next pick is The Husband Hour by Jamie Brenner, and this is considered a beach read, and. It, it, it moves quickly. The book is about a widow, a young widow. Her name is Laura Kincaid, and she's been living in her family's Sunout Beach house ever since uh, her husband passed away. It's actually a, it, it's a location near Atlantic City on the Jersey Shore called Oxycon Island, and it's considered a barrier inlet uh, where it's a, it's a popular place for I guess people that live in the eastern coast. It's a real place. It's a real place. And we know the house is on the beachfront. It's a four bedroom colonial. It's in uh, Green Gables. It's almost like, well, how can I go there and stay there? Uh -huh. <laughs> it's, uh, it sounds very appealing. But she lives there. Lauren lives there all year round, even during the winter when it's desolate and deserted. And she really pretty much wants to be secluded. And the story opens with the summer season beginning, it's around Memorial Day, and usually her parents, her family, will visit for the long weekend and then leave. In this case, the family decides to stay indefinitely for the entire summer. So that includes her parents, her sister Stephanie, who she's estranged from a bit, mm -hmm. and her six-year-old nephew. And we then learn little piece by piece a little bit about Lauren marriage to the character who's sort of off scene, but we have a lot of flashbacks to her husband, Rory, and he's her high school sweetheart, and he was a hockey player and then eventually enlisted uh, in the army to fight in, in Iraq, which is where he was eventually killed. So she's widowed at the young age of 24, if I'm not mistaken, and we sympathize with the main character encounter a new character, a filmmaker named Matt Creel, and he's working on a documentary on Lori Kincaid, and he doesn't want to do anything exploitive, he wants to really just get to the crux of who he was, 
And he also has a theory that Lori was affected uh, by what's known as CTE, chronic trauma traumatic and encephalopathy. It's a neurodegenerative disease associated with repeated brain injury. So between the athletic uh, career of Lauren's husband and then the head trauma he experienced there and then also during his two tours in Iraq, uh, the filmmaker really has this theory that there's more that was happening with so that's sort of like the, the background of the story, and it, it does unfold nicely. You learn some of the secrets that are there, and there's always family secrets, there's always some tension. Why the sisters don't get along? Um, there is like a big reveal uh, towards the end. and uh, But in the end, I should say it, it is a happy ending, which mm -hmm. you want in a summer movie, you don't want it to end up too heavy. The title, The Husband Hour, is related to the time restriction that Lauren Kincaid gives to Matt Frio, the filmmaker. She says, okay, I'll, I'll finally give you an interview, but no longer than an hour. Oh. And then eventually, it turns out to several <laughs> one hour interviews. But during the course, course of these interviews, she learns more about her husband and maybe what was affecting him and what led to problems within their marriage. And she learns more about herself and, and eventually just sort of to let go and, and move on. So you do feel good at the end. And it's funny because, you know, I know they're characters in the book, but you sort of feel like they're friends. Like, oh, I wonder what Lauren's going to do now, you know, oh, with, okay. with her career. Is she going to go back to New York or Washington? Um, and it, so it was a perfect retreat. It's, it's light, it's entertaining, it's not too long. So I have one last choice. It's called When Life Gives You Lululemons by Warren Weisberger. And I thought, what a great title, When Life Gives You Lululemons. So for those of you that don't know what Lululemons are, they are kind of like athletic wear, like jogging or yoga wear, um, pants that women wear now all the time. Fruit? No, <laughs> no, Lululemons. <laughs> They are like these very hip, chic, little, like tight yoga pants of all colors that women wear now. Very popular. So, this book, Lauren Weisberger's book, is the sequel to her other book, The Devil Wears Prada. Oh, I know that. Yes. yes. So, in the book, we reconnect, in this new book, we reconnect with Emily Charlton. Um, you'll remember in The Devil Wore a Prana that Emily was the edgy assistant to Amanda Priestley, who was the editor-in-chief of Runway Magazine. Well, now we reconnect with Emily, and she's left Runway. She's moved out to the West Coast, and she's living in Hollywood, California, and she's working as an image consultant to the stars. However, her career is not going as smoothly as she had hoped, and she's just not just not going well. So in need of some um, TLC, she travels back out east to visit her old friend Miriam. Miriam at one time was a high-powered attorney, but now she's a stay-at-home mom, and Miriam lives in Greenwich, Connecticut. So Emily flies out and visits with Miriam. While she's staying there, she meets this woman named Carolina. Carolina is an ex Victoria's Secret model. Okay? Now, Carolina has a crisis of her own that's going on. Carolina has just been arrested for a DUI okay. um, and was having children in her car, too, mm -hmm. on top of that. So there's a scandal about, with, about her because she's a, um, sort of a celebrity and she's got this thing hanging over her. So the three women, Emily, Miriam, and Carolina, they band together, they join forces, and they take Greenwich, Connecticut by storm in an effort to clear Carolina's name and to set the record straight. Now, the setting of Greenwich, Connecticut, it, it's not an accident. Um, Lauren Weisberger did that intentionally because the book is sort of like a satire on the rich 
rich and pampered who live in suburbia. So in the, the main story, the story mainly takes place in Greenwich, Connecticut, and we see all the very well-coiffed and pampered types walking around. And according to the author, all the women walking that walk around in their Lululemons. Okay, <laughs> so um, it's a very um, entertaining book, very light, good summer read. You find yourself rooting for Emily this time. She's a little softer around the edges, now soft, softened a little bit. And um, so that's my that's my second choice, and I hope some of you will pick it up and enjoy it. So that wraps up this episode. We did want to announce again uh, that you should save the date for October 20th. It's a Saturday, and we are hosting at the Harrison Public Library an all-day author event. So we have a dozen writers who write for in different genres. We have mystery suspense, historical fiction, contemporary fiction, and we also have nonfiction and biographical. There, there'll be something for everyone. So just keep checking the website. We'll have something more definitive posted soon. Uh, but October 20th. It'll be, it'll be a, good a good one. It'll be an excellent one. We hope you'll join us. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your day. That wraps up this episode. Now we're dozen. Oh, dozen. Oh, no, we've got one more book. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> when life gives you Lululemons, um, she has to uh, and keeps laughing. That's good. Because <laughs> then I was going to say, oh, she really is happy. Because like, you know what? I almost started laughing when you were talking about this. I'm sorry, but like, it's like, remember I said you always talk about very dark things? So I said, like, oh, God, another, another something very bad. <laughs> I almost started laughing when you said C2E. And I'm like, oh, I look like a moron. <laughs> Ourselves. Okay. You can leave that part. I, I kind of want to. I we'll see how it goes. <laughs>